You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. Alan Aguirre, host of the Chameleon Church Show, coming live and direct. I'm coming live and direct to you from the Wasatch back in uh, northern Utah, where we had our first little dusting of snow. We were supposed to get, they were saying 12 to 18 inches. Well, we didn't get, well, we're at my elevation, we didn't get that much. We got maybe two or three inches. And it's just like on the trims, it's, it's, it's still too warm. The ground too. The ground is too warm. Even the deck was too warm. Uh, but it's winter, so I'm busting out my winter sweaters. See, see, yeah. it's that's about the only really. Well, it's beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous around here when it's winter. It's gorgeous around here year round. But I get to wear. I get to. I get, I'm sorry. I get to wear clothes. <laughs> <laughs> versus my uh, summer mountain attire. Oh my gosh! Hey, so we've had an we've had a we've had a great month. It's October twelfth. It's um, uh, see here we go again. We're almost halfway through October. How did that happen? Uh, this freaks me out. It freaks me out. Time is just like. Oh, well, what's that? Revelation thirteen. If it wasn't, is it in Revelation thirteen? Please correct me if I'm in, if I'm incorrect. Uh, if the days weren't shortened, even the elect would be deceived. And because we and we've, I think I talked about this in uh, incorruptible two minute warning. If you don't know what that is, uh, incorruptible official is the Facebook page, and um, it's a thing I do during the week. Like well, I try to do it every day. I try doing two minute little, a two minute rant, and then on Friday I kind of unpack the rant. Um, and I was talking about Revelation 13 the other a uh, couple of weeks ago. This is you know what happens in Revelation 13 is is happens to the entire world, the whole world, not just a country, not just a region, not just a people group. It happens to the entire world, and the entire world is in on it, and the entire world submits to it, and it talks about how the enemy is the dragon is allowed to make war with the church and win. If you're supposed to die, you'll die. You're supposed to go into prison. You'll go to prison. It says that's always encouraging. And, um, those, that's the good news of the good news. You get to die or go to jail. <laughs> and it talks about the beast and the, the image of the beast and the, the, the dragon that, or the beast that comes out of the water. It looks like a speaks like a lamb. No, looks, Looks like a lamb, but but talks like a dragon. That, that that's an imposter. See, that's an imitation right there, and um, and he goes after us. And if it wasn't, it says if if the days hadn't have been shortened, this what what is happening is so strong that even the elect would be deceived. Now, we can only assume that we're the who the elect are i mean we can't really say i mean can we i mean because see you can't because everybody all of christendom believes they're the elect whether they are or not whether they keep god's commandments or not whether they they're in negligent sin or not they all believe they're the elect and that's just not possible because the elect is a select few right right so that's the majority of the battle right there is um, now it's not any now, uh, now I'm not saying it's my job or anybody's job to determine and to do that separating of who's the elect and who's not no all I all we can do is judge by the fruit right if, if you when so for example when I meet a Christian and they're trying to convince me about how Christian they are it's probably because they're not very Christian. If you're trying to convince me <laughs> and so what I tell them is like you know what you don't have to say anything. If if you truly are who you say you are, I'll see it. It'll be evident in your life. It'll be evident with how you carry yourself, how you talk, you know, all that stuff. Uh, a lot of people don't believe that I'm actually a legitimate Christian. Don't believe me? Read the comments. <laughs> But 
you, we can't, to me, it's a concerning thing because I actually have friends that believe they're okay, that they're on the correct side of things. And they're, they're clearly not simply based on, now we can get real, real narrow and go, oh, well, they don't keep Torah, so they're not saved. Because it, it, yes and no. That's why I say yes and no, because it's not, it's not that cut. And, well, it is that cut and clear, but we're in transition, right? We're in pre- if you saw me 20 years ago, you would say that guy's not saved. You see me today, you say I'm not saved. See what I'm saying? There's transition. So it's time tells all. And I believe people weed themselves out. They, um, they, you can't keep the facade. Not, not everybody's very good at keeping a, a facade. Time tells all. Uh, it's re- that's why I say it's it's really it's really uh, it's really it's it's God's responsibility, not yours or mine, to determine. Unless it's just obviously blatant. You know what I'm saying? Boom! There it is. Bam! I'm a I'm a card carrying pagan, and I do animal sacrifices to you know whatever, and you know. I mean, obviously there's obvious, but when the majority of Christianity states or believes that they are and they're not, how do we work with that? How do we sift through that? That's a very, that's, that's quite the challenge, right? Right, boys? Yeah. All right, if you're new to the Chameleon Church Show, my name's Alan Aguara. We do this every Tuesday morning. I've been doing this every Tuesday morning for over three and a half years. <laughs> Uh, we picked up. We uh, I ditched all the old guys. Obviously, we got rid of those guys and uh, picked up some new ones. See how long they last. Uh, Lenny Parada is the co-host. Uh, he's a he's my old pastor from long time ago, from decades ago. He married my wife and I. Lenny Parada, how you doing, man? Good morning. Good morning. And then we got Chris. No last name. So you? He's like he wants to be like Sting or Madonna. It's just Chris. No last name. Chris is an old drummer friend of mine. He used to play in my band, and uh, we're we're more than that. I mean, it, we're we're family. It's uh, yeah, yeah. Chris, how you doing, man? Thanks for being able to hang out with us, and I yeah. appreciate the two of you um, willing to take the show over for the next two Tuesdays while I'm out and about. I'm on, I'm going on a road trip on a national road. I'm going across country and back with my my wife. For our anniversary, yeah. since New York won't let me in. Well, I think they'll let me in. They'll just won't let me out. <laughs> If I get in, oh my gosh. Happy to be here. Happy to help you. I think it's always good to take a trip with your wife. You said earlier that Lenny married, you are in Utah. Lenny married you and your wife. So you said. In Burbank. Burbank. Oh, he didn't marry you. He performed the marriage ceremony. Got it. Not yes, clear. He performed the ceremony. Are you frozen, Chris? Um, I'm Looks not frozen like here. Chris is frozen. Lenny, are you frozen? No. Not frozen. Wow. Everybody's frozen. Or am I frozen? What happened no. there? You don't no, look everybody, frozen. everybody froze up on me. Hmm. I'm good. All right. So, yeah, Lenny married my wife and I. Many moons. Many moons. How In many Burbank, years is that going to be? Four, how many years? It's going to be 33. 33 years. Wow. Yikes. That is a long time. Congrats. Congrats. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah, we were the, in fact, while we were at your church, Lenny, we were least likely to survive. That was the going, the running uh, commentary. Uh, my wife and I were the least likely to survive in our marriage. We had two children when we, when we got married. Uh, Corin was three Dang months old. Yeah. We, were the, we were least likely to succeed in life and in marriage and as parents. That was the running commentary, was it not? You, you had the mixture back then. There, when you walked in the door, man, people were going, "What?" You know, it's a, it's a, you're frozen now. Me? Oh yeah. Wow, I'm, I can see myself moving. It's weird. You know, we have the most technical difficulties on the Chameleon Church Show. Can you guys hear me? Oh yeah, I hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. you just froze. Huh? Because I'm, I can see myself that I'm not, I'm not, I can see that I'm not frozen. I wonder what's going on. We have the most technical difficulty on the Chameleon Church Show, and I think it's because of the nature of the uh, the show. Am I still frozen? Yes. Wow. 
It's showing that I'm not frozen, huh? I can just reboot that and see what happens. But anyway, I think it's I think it's really interesting that we get the most um, what's the word technical difficulty on the um, on this show. And I th- out of all the other live streams that I do, this is the the, the stream um, or the broadcast that has the most technical difficulty, and I think it's because of the um the the nature of the content isn't that interesting and yep. and or <clears throat> ecam and Streamyard cannot and do not work together so it's either spiritual or just technical how's that yeah you sound like a conspiracy theorist <laughs> am i still frozen yes yes you're still throws frozen now you're oh, not wow. that's so you're weird moving. i just i just rebooted it everything hold on you're moving see. you're moving now oh hey, I'm, while I'm you're good yeah. All right. So while you're figuring out your camera, let me. Can I say two thoughts that I had while you were in your opening? Yeah. Well, we were ta- me. That's why we you're talking here, about. Bro. We, we think we're uh, everyone, including us, thinks we're the elect, and it's not ours to. Necess- you know, ultimately, it doesn't matter what we think, because it will happen. Uh, but I just thought of you'll know them by their fruit. Yep. So we're known by our fruit and just the, the everyone here on the call, I'm sure knows the parable of the 10 versions and you, you be ready and you keep your wicks tr- trimmed and keep your lamps full of oil. Be at the ready, always watching, always waiting. Nothing deeper than that, but I was, I was just, God yeah. brought that to, but brought that to my mind when you were talking. And it's true. It's absolutely true because that is, I mean, we are supposed to judge by the fruit of the, of the person and their life. And uh, a lot of people forget that. Uh, they don't, you know, a lot of, most people will judge by, um, what's the word? Uh, bias. They judge by bias, not by the biblical definition of being, you know, of judging, which is fruit. Which is why I, I use that term. Uh, I have big juicy fruit and I'll put it on the table against anyone. People don't like that either. Have you noticed that that's the only way you never see in Scripture anything definitive? He always describes his by their fruit and by their love. Yeah. And you just can't nail that down. The only clue Romans gives us is that they obey and they love his covenants. They're part of his covenant people. That's what election yeah. comes from, the doctrine of election. Yeah. Um revelation the, the the revelation of john does describe the end time church which would be the elect yeah. it does describe them by uh, two times and it's they're described by uh they keep the torah and they have their, the they keep the and they keep the testimony of jesus that's right which is the spirit of prophecy hey it's the top of the hour let's do this real quick and uh we'll be right back oh you love this one chris No, I guess I should. I'm, I'm 
of course, this is, isn't true, but I confess the reason why that's that long is so I can get up and get a cup of coffee. <laughs> but that's just not true. Hey! So, judging by the fruit, you know, what, is there anything else we want to talk about? Or is that just, is that what we're going to talk about today? I don't know. I just, I just figured uh, I had something to talk about. I just, I can't, I came with no agenda, uh, no agenda. Char- Charles has posted some interesting comments in there from Facebook. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, so the Matthew, the Matthew one, he says that I don't know you because you're uh, um, lawless. And the word lawless in the gospel there is animos in the Greek, which means Torahless, Torahlessness, like a Gentile or a pagan, void or not keeping the Torah of Moses. That's a concern because if because Jesus is literally saying, I you know, yes, you spoke in tongues and you healed the sick and you cast out demons and you raised the dead in my name but i don't know you because you didn't keep the torah that's um that's a game changer right there and you know it's it's in the red letters you can't ignore it now contextually christianity our our critics will say that the commandments jesus is talking about are his commandments what commandments are those, you ask, Mr. Christian? And he says, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And then that's when we go, I'm sorry, now your biblical illiteracy and your biblical ignorance is screaming because Jesus is quoting the Torah, and he says that the entire Torah is suspended, held up, supported by, not done away with by those two, which means... Those are the two. That's how you approach the Torah by loving the Father, and loving the and loving your fellow brother, which is how the Ten Commandments are laid out. And Paul says in Romans, is it? I can't, where in Romans he says, Paul says that those two um, summarize the Ten. Well, we also know that the Ten summarize the six hundred and seven. Or the 606. Everyone says there's 613. No, there's, they include, when they say 613 Torah laws, they're including seven rabbinical only laws. Not, they're not even Torah. So it's 606. And out of the 606, you and I can only keep like a third of them. Why? Well, one, there's no temple. Two, you're not a Levitical priest. And then you have, then it breaks down into, are you a woman? Are you a farmer? Are you a leper? You know what I'm saying? It, and then when you go through all that, you have this handful of commandments that we can keep. And so you just can't see. So the biblical illiteracy and the biblical ignorance says, oh yeah, love God, love your neighbor. Now, those are the only two commandments Jesus is stressing. Those are the only two commandments we have to keep. Those are the only two commandments he's he's referring to when it says, for example, Matthew 7. Well, that's we know that's not true. That's impossible because you can't commit adultery. You can't murder. You can't steal. You can't lie. You can't eat pork. You've got to keep the Sabbaths. You've got to keep the, the feasts. That's all in there too, see? So, again, it's just straight up biblical contact and Christians don't like that in fact they're absolutely terrified of that because they love their one verse theology and their one verse doctrines which I'm sorry it doesn't work that way so the um, it's terrifying so to what extent does so I mean where does this go well all right let's look at it this way let's look at it from the uh, traditional Christian perspective uh, sin is missing the mark. Well, okay, that's that's nice. That's a nicety. But First John actually does define sin, and that's the transgression of the law. Yes. Okay, well, let's get out of the let's get out of the Greek. What does transgression of the law? What does that mean? That means breaking the Torah, not keeping the Torah. That's sin. Okay, so we can nail it down that sin is not keeping the Torah based on just new testament teaching besides whatever paul says so and what jesus says in the red letters 
So if, if sin is not keeping the Torah, then it does make sense that I don't know you because you didn't keep my Torah. And then there's this horrifically terrifying verse in, 60, in Isaiah 66 that I posted the other day, which is like, just, it's really harsh. Yes. And uh, you guys, you guys, you guys, please comment while I look up this, this passage here. Is that about entering his temple? Yeah, it's a, it's in that context, yeah. Yeah. What else? Before Chuck know. Misner died, when he read that, it was on the whole theme, too, of him learning about the Sabbath. He uh, did an about face about I don't know, quite a few things, and it was amazing to hear it come out of his mouth. I mean, he was a premier teacher for Calvary Chapels for years. Wow. Okay, so Isaiah is speaking about the millennium reign. This is Jesus has returned. He's reigning from Jerusalem as high priest. It's the it's during the millennium. Yeah. I am actually going to read out of Isaiah sixty six. For just as so, and here's an, and again, here's another argument contextually of why we supposed why why you need to keep the feast today. For just as the new heavens and the new earth that I am making will continue in my presence, says Adonai. Okay, now we know where we're at, right? Now we know where we are in the timeline. So will your descendants and your name continue. Every month on Rosh Kodesh, the new moon, and every week on Shabbat, the biblical Sabbath, everyone living will come to worship in my presence, says Adonai. Well, see, if you're not, you know, Christians are like, well, what's Rosh Kadesh? What do you mean new moon? And they keep the, 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 the Catholic Sabbath. In Isaiah 66, it says that those that are alive, the humans that are alive in this time, in this time period, will, will worship him, will worship in my presence every month on Rosh Kodesh and on Shabbat. As they leave, they will look on the corpses of the people who rebelled against me. For their worm will never die and their fire will never be quenched, but they will be abhorrent to all humanity. And what's really, really, really tough. Okay, so one, we see that it's, it's in the, during the you know, it's, it's in our future. Jesus is, is on earth because you're able to access him and, and worship him physically, and you're going to do it on every Rosh Kodesh, every new moon, and every Sabbath, just like the Shumanite woman in, that built Elijah that apartment above her house. Because when she said, I'm, I want to go, give me a donkey so I can go see the prophet. And the husband goes, why? It's not Shabbat or Rosh Kodesh. Okay, so there's our, there's our tie-in. So on every Shabbat and every Rosh Kodesh, we're going to worship him. And on the way out of that gathering, we're going to look upon the people who rebelled against God because they're going to be, they're going to, they're, because they're corpses. The worm will never die and their fire will never be quenched. What's really scary is chapters Isaiah 65 and 66 explain what made those people that rebelled against God, what made them rebellious. And part of it, and one of the things he says is they ate pork. In both chapter sixty five and sixty six, so this is serious stuff, man. It's not like just oh, I, I, I'll wear my blue shirt today instead of the green one. No, this is life or death, and people are and right, and the rebellious will say, "Alan, you're insane if you think people are going to die, oh, uh, without God if they eat pork based on diet." And then I get to say, hey, Muppet, I didn't write it. I didn't write any of this stuff. Well, it's your interpretation is wrong, Alan. Really? I didn't. There's no. When, 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 the, when it says Jesus wept, I don't have to interpret that. I don't have to interpret the Bible. The Bible interprets itself, which is why I quoted Isaiah. And I quoted, you know what I'm saying? I, I'll, I'll, I, can t I, 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 I give you context. I don't just say one verse and say here it is i didn't write it this is this is not this is not my content and it's not my interpretation this is what it says contextually on its own 
And you're not arguing with me. You're not hurting my feelings. <laughs> you're you hurting- know, New Testament that the those that disagree, they hate this verse. Paul lays it clear for both Jew and Gentile. He says in uh, Romans 3.29, Is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of Gentiles also, since God is one, there's the Shema, who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then overthrow the law by this faith? By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. They hate yeah. that verse. He lays it out so clear, no uncertain terms, before he even goes into his whole diatribe about Abraham, the covenants, the uh, commonwealth of Israel, all of this. He says, no, we uphold the law. It's never been done away with. And, and like it's, I said last night, God's not required. God's not asking us to do this stuff so that we'll be religious. No, right. God's asking us to do this stuff because these are the weapons of our warfare. You want to survive the fight? You better be able to run. You know, think of basic training. You're taking a regular Joe. You're running them through training. Right. The discipline, the getting up in the middle of the night, the waking up early, the making of the bed. Think of the whole process of basic training. They're, they're, they're yelling at you, they're, right? Because they're taking you from what you were or who you are, and they're trying to make a soldier out of you. And that requires, you know, lots of discipline. That's what the yelling's about. That's what the bed's about. That's what's getting up early and putting on 50 pounds on your back and running for 12 hours or running for 12 miles. You know, all this stuff. They're training. They're teaching you uh discipline and uh what else uh stamina and pers- you know all this stuff all the stuff that goes through basic training why well so that when you're on the battlefield you don't get yourself killed or the guy next to you That's and right. you'll be quick to re- to respond to the commands of your of your sergeant or whoever's in charge of your your squad or whatever right so why not only not only Part of it is, so, is to keep you alive. It's so that you'll live and survive whatever it is you're going to be put to. That's the exact same reason. That's why I brought it up last night. That's the exact same reason why God does what he does, how he does it. It's called discipleship. Discipleship is this is spiritual boot camp. And the majority of us weren't discipled. And the majority of us weren't discipled well. And so on Root Awakening, I I didn't bring it up last night, but on Friday night on Root Awakening, I said, because we don't think like that, spiritually minded, we don't do the things of the spirit. We right. So when hardship or right, when when whenever something happens to us, we resort to what we know and we respond based on what we know and we know the physical. And so the majority of the time we're reacting in the physical realm. Because we don't have our spiritual muscles built. Because we don't have spiritual base camp under under our belts that we can rely on or refer to in hard times or times of trouble. And that's how you get killed in the battlefield. And that's how you get your, your wife and your kids killed and your, the people around you killed. Right. You know, Jesus made it clear, you know. <laughs> oh, and, it's, and like Michael Michael said, and it's also so that you can defeat your enemy. That's right. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. No, no, you're not. I just, I was just thinking because I hear the plea of people going, but I'm having a hard time, and I'm, I'm, I'm all my joy's gone, and yeah. then they go, "Oh, how do I stop sinning?" And yeah, you know, it, he lays it out. He says, "Obey me." That's why he says, "You know what? If you keep playing with your zipper because of your eyes, it's death." Yep. You know, and those are the simple things why people are sad and why they keep sitting because they're not obeying the simple things that Jesus said in the red letters. He goes, don't right. look. I, I'm trying to be very not crass, right? but you know what well, I'm talking about. Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. Christianity doesn't really have a plan of attack. They don't really have a schedule, a, a base camp schedule for us. So they, they basically, here's, here's, my, here's what I remember about Christianity. They wait until you're in 
crisis because then that's when you show up to your elders or your pastors and you go, oh, I screwed up. Help. It's Now it's too late. It's after the fact. The idea is that you train them ahead of time so they avoid the crisis. Yeah, I was. I pulled up when you were talking about Isaiah. I pulled up Isaiah sixty-five, and it's it's so sobering. Yeah, I mean, to me, to me personally, uh, yeah. I mean, I think I think of the word comfort. I think if if we just said most of us, I'm assuming, are in the United States, and take out what we're talking about, just. Um, looking at from a consumer materialism, we just have it. We have it nice. I'm, I'm not. I don't, I'm not waking up today, wondering what I'm going to eat. I'm not waking up. You know, I have coffee. I mean, coffee is a luxury, right? Just simple. The simple. It's so. It's no, so. Is a necessity. I don't know. What yeah. You're okay. About. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just. You know. It's just. We're not. We're not having to think of basic needs. I mean, we're talking about. Oh, what am I gonna? What What's the second car I'm gonna buy? You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah. And so then, if that comes over into our spirituality and our our faith, it's kind of the. It's related in that it, we don't. We're not like in the the epistles and the people Paul and. Peter are writing to and and who's Jesus talking to they're they're they are struggling they're fighting for their lives they're on the run they are sawn in two right I, I and you just go wow how if my faith doesn't mean much to me now or I'm not taking it seriously now when the going does get tougher because he tells us he says in this word you're gonna have trouble if they hated you, remember they hated me first. It like there is something that will be harder in my life than there is now, and and I'm answering question of it's hard for the modern church in let's just say in the United States to think like that because we we we're not struggling, we're, we're not struggling, and as you say, and Lenny said, I think that we don't come to the pastor, we don't come to the people we need help from until there is a crisis. So right. I, I, I look at, I look at, I look at Isaiah 65 for me and I'm saying, well, this, this is a heart's posture. It's talking about worship. And Jesus says, here I am, here I am over here. Here I am, here I am. He's trying to get our attention. I spread out my hands all the day to rebellious people. How am I rebellious Lord? What what ways am I wa- are am I walking that aren't good? How am I following my own devices? Um, how am I provoking you, Lord? And it, it's just it's just sobering that it's like we talked a little bit often, but the remaining in the vine. How how what am, I'm looking at? How I'm remaining in the vine? How do I dig? How do I get deeper into the vine? How do I remain here? And it's a it's a proactive conversation, right? And and the tragedy, in my opinion, well, in one of my opinions, the tragedy lies in the fact that Christianity doesn't have a way to to raise up their own people to avoid the tragedies. That and that's and that was my point that I was getting to. See, God already laid out a way. God's already laid at, laid it all out. He's laid out, here's how you live. Here's how you equip yourself to avoid these things, right? Uh, prayer, fasting, praying in the Spirit, worshiping in the Spirit, right? Eating clean, keeping my Sabbaths, coming to me. You're going to come to God on a, on a regular five times a month easily. New moon and four Sabbaths, right? And, you, right? and there, he has a whole cadence and cycle a lifestyle cycle for us to worship him and honor him and to be reminded by him, right? Why do I wear tassels? Because it tells me to. Why does it tell me to? So that I can remember his commandments and not break them. That's what the, what would Jesus do bracelet? Why would you do it? Well, why, why create a, what would Jesus do bracelet when he's already created a, what would Jesus do tassel for you? See, but because Christianity doesn't actually know what the Bible says, they can't teach it to you, and they can't teach you how to do it. They can't teach you how to keep the Word of God so that you can avoid 
what Israel did in the desert and died. That's the whole reason why Paul says that in 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 12, why we wrote this. So that's the, the thing that frustrates me the most is Christianity doesn't do what the Bible says, which makes it a cult, and they don't teach you what the Bible says so that you can do what the Bible says so that you can avoid the pitfalls of fornication, adultery, lying, stealing, uh, covetousness, whatever, whatever. But they can't teach you what they don't know. And it's all already right there. And you know what? Every Everything, they don't know what true spiritual worship is. I mean, the quintessential Old Testament place that King David taught people what true worship was was Psalm 119. It's a long one, but it has to do with the, with the Torah being a light into our path. And then what does Paul say? He says, you know, I'm going to appeal to you by the mercies of God to present your bodies. That's the physical as a living sacrifice, which has to be holy and acceptable, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. It, your mind's going to get transformed and you will be tested and you will be able to discern what the will of God is, what is holy and acceptable. That's unpack that. You got to unpack the Torah. Right. That's just the bottom line. That's what Paul was saying. But we rush over that. We go, oh, that's good. Uh, uh, you know what? I'll, I'll abstain from this. It's not even talk. Yeah. It, it's people don't understand what true spiritual worship is. It's my wife. My wife and I have actually been accused of you're trying to keep me from heaven with all this, all these rules and stuff. I'm like, really? You think I'm that powerful? You think I'm so powerful that I can keep you from heaven? And I'm trying to send you to hell. We have literally been told that you're trying to keep me from heaven and send me to hell with all these rules and, and regulations. I'm like, wow, that's kind of weird. Again, he's not trying to make us religious. He's trying to equip us so that we can one survive the, the the spiritual warfare in our physical realm, but that we will also be equipped to win and survive the spiritual warfare in the spiritual realm. That's all he's trying to do. That's all he's trying to. That's all God is trying to do. He's not. I understand, Mr. Christian, if your God is throwing rules and regulations and a whole bunch of crap your way to make you religious and, and all that. I understand if that's your God doing that, but it's not my God. My God's not doing that. My God doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. Your God might, but my God isn't doing that to me. And he's not trying to do that to you. You just don't have a revelation of that God. You need a revelation of the person of Messiah, of Jesus Christ. Of Yeshua, you need that's that's a revelation you need because the God you're describing isn't the God I'm serving, and it's not the God I'm peddling. <laughs> oh man, we got a long way to go, and you know what? The times are not getting any easier, man. The times are not getting easier. Just starting to roll. I mean, if we read, so it was suggested, I think, in back in two thousand and eight by uh, Bickle, Mike Bickle, that the, the, that revelation was Acts 2, right? It was the, the book of Acts for the end time, and that the book of Revelation doesn't happen to us. We cause it through our prayers. And um, it makes a lot of sense. Well, if you read what it says and you understand what it says, it, it, it's, it's laying out our future, our future warfare and the strategies we have to have. And... If you're still straining on the gnat of whether you should keep the Sabbath or, or eat pork, for example, if you're still straining on that gnat, please explain to me how you think you're going to overcome a false prophet, a beast system, a antichrist, uh, the bottomless pit being opened up. Uh, how about those uh, stinging bugs or what are they that that's, that are just are 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 released to sting and plague men? It's it's a, it's a, it's a deceiving little frog beast. I don't know what they are. Explain to me if you're still straining on the net of whether you should eat pork or not. How are you going to be able to take any of that on? And that's pretty much the answer I get. Crickets. <laughs> So what you're saying is these aren't suggestions? No, yeah, I'm, 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 that's what I'm saying. They're not suggestions. 
what I'm what I'm wondering about just the the that Isaiah passage. They eat pig's flesh. I didn't hear about that growing up in Sunday school. No, I, I was I was I was lost in a moment while you were talking. I was I was just recalling. I mean, I have I have really good memories. Don't get me wrong. Um, raised raised with in pleasant boundaries, but the you know going to church every Sunday. Wonderful Sunday school teachers, and but we never heard that line about pig's flesh. But what I what I'm wondering about that's because, is that's because if, they think it's God's meat candy. <laughs> yeah, if you are, if you are, it it's not like a law to like save the pigs. It, it's not like a law for, um, what is his intent? Like if you're saying. In, when the end times come and we need to be able to discern the warning, warning signs and participate in the spiritual warfare, what is it about pig's flesh or any commandment not doing it that keeps us from operating in that power that seems like he's promising is available to us? And is it a distraction? Is it I, I, where I'm thinking is it's asking, where does your hope lie? What are you putting your What are you putting your faith in? What are you putting your hope in? And how would eating pig's flesh specifically be displaying my hope is in this other thing? And I know then it was tied to other religions and and the non-Israelites, but it's just I, really it's really fascinating that it's not about rule following, or what is it about the rules that engage our heart to be able to discern when end times are rising and the heat is on. So there's this awesome meme that's, there's this meme and it says, Oh, um, God doesn't care about what you eat. Yeah. Ask Adam and Eve about that. See, and that takes it down to what it is that there it is right there. It's all about obedience. Yeah. Taking are control you where we should be obey. Yeah. Are you going to obey me? It doesn't matter whether you like it or not. It doesn't matter whether, whether it makes sense to you or not. It does. You have no part of the equation. You obey or you don't obey. And we have our idea of why pig's flesh is and meat. Why is swine such a mate? Two things. One, why is God so opposed to us eating that? And two, why is it? so important for man to eat it and we think it's because it's uh we think that swine is a byproduct of something that occurred pre-flood when the watchers were experimenting with the dna of human animal and plant life and we think that maybe this is a um one of their experiences DNA experiments, the results of one of the watcher experiments, DNA experiments, and that, and that it did involve human, and that's why it's such an abomination. And then if you start thinking about it, what does human flesh smell like? What does human flesh taste like? And the fact that we can actually utilize, and I've never, I don't think I've ever said this really publicly, and the fact that we can utilize actual pig organs. Yep. Um, I'm thinking, is that, is that why God is so opposed to our uh, eating of it? And you want you want to paint me want to paint me insane? You can. There you go. I just gave you the content to paint me it's, insane. It's the number one animal that they use for replacement parts. No. Yeah. So that would that would have something to do with um, tainting God's creation. Altering his plan of who you are, your DNA, your how you were created to worship, stealing this, choking out the seed, an attempt to choke the seed, a, a attempt to choke out warriors of light. I don't know. Yeah. There's, I mean, you, you just you just lost uh, you just lost uh, if anyone was on the edge with Chameleon Church. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And, and let's say that's absolutely completely ridiculous and assumption because it is. Um, 
it you know and this is like one of the and this is one of the one of the one of the uh, uh, the comments we were getting on the Root Awakening show, and that's like, what do you mean? You, Alan just said that Jesus spoke in tongue. There's no proof of that. And that, and so, and I literally spent 68 seconds talking about it in a 40 minute segment, and everyone lost their, you know, some people lost their mind. And I'm like, but at the very end of it, I went, regardless of whether Jesus spoke in tongues or not, that's regard regardless of that. Here's what it does say about you and speaking in tongues. So whether you agree with me about Jesus speaking in tongues or not, I don't care if you agree with me or not. Who cares? But here's what it does say in the Bible, in the New Testament, regarding your requirement to pursue those gifts and that, and that Jesus said himself that if you are a true follower of his, that's one of the signs that, would, that would, you would have, one of the things that you would do. So, But see, they try to make it about, Alan just said this, and I'm going to go, what did Jesus say? Don't imitate me. You'll, you've never once heard me say, oh, do, do it like me and you'll be good. I've never said that. Don't imitate me. You're not supposed to imitate me. In the same way, you can think I'm absolutely crazy about what I just said about pigs. I don't care. But there's a whole bunch of Bible verses that says not to eat pork. And you cannot show me one correct verse in the New Testament or Old Testament or a slew of verses that, uh, that says that pork's on the, on the menu and it's okay. Yeah, I can, Alan. Mark 7, Jesus declared all foods clean. Well, Jesus is going to be using his dad's definition of food, not yours. And we have two chapters of God's definition of food. And uh, swine is not on that list. So, good try, but no. You hear about um, Afghanistan, people in the in Afghanistan or Iraq or where Jesus appears to a Muslim. Mm -hmm. I have. They're waking up in the middle of the night, and there's there he is in white. Yeah. I That's think about, I think about that person who has an encounter with the Holy Jesus. <laughs> And maybe they don't have a Bible or whatever. Would where would the where would they get the revelation not to eat, not to eat or or any of the Torah? Well, Muslims already don't. Muslims are, have their version of kosher. Yeah, I realize that's a that's a bad example, but like where they where they were. Let's just say Torah broadly. If they had no no scripture, or I've always wondered about that because I grew I grew up in the church, so the Bible's been a thing since. I was an infant, but if you were yeah. in your thirties and in a place where that, you, that was just a total cultural change and how, how would the, I've always been fascinated in wonder about how would the Lord speak and lead that person and what that life would be like. So I actually know a man that uh, was raised in a Palestinian camp in Lebanon who was groomed to be a terrorist and to kill Jews and uh, Muslim and um, found himself on the island of Cyprus following the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit directed him to the house of a friend of ours who's a Messianic Jew. He knocks on the door and, the, and you have to understand this guy looked like your stereotypical Arab terrorist. <laughs> And the uh, the guy opens up the, um, the 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 messianic guy opens up the door, his front door, and there's this, well, obviously you know, Muslim terrorist and standing at my at his door, thinking, oh, this is it, this is how I'm going out. And the and the guy goes, he goes, are you a Jew? And this he's an American. The American messianic messianic goes, I am, and he falls at his feet. And he goes, I'm so sorry. It was like this massive Holy Spirit thing because he had been questioning. I think what, to give context, somebody had given him a Bible and he started reading it and his imam was um, coming against him. And so he was kind of pretty much, you know, on this quest because their God, it was what he was learning and reading about our God was different than their God. And um, so there was this, you know, 
come from, you know, this climax. And then anyway, he comes to Jesus and, uh, and he's being at that point, they, 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 his family, they, they, they try to kill him because that, that's, that's, that's how, that's the reception you're going to receive. Uh, they're going to threaten to kill you because you've just, you just did the, the worst thing you could possibly do uh, is to make that jump from Islam to Christianity. They took his passport away. Uh, he was thrown in jail. Anyway, there's countless stories of this man being released and, and you know, supernaturally escaping and uh, supernaturally being spar- spared from death. And it's just on and on and on and on. And, um, and uh, th- let me address this one thing. Laura, Laura is, Laura is asking, I'm going to address this because I, I have to deal with this. I've been dealing with this for 30 years. I wonder if Yeshua actually introduces himself as Jesus to people in dreams. He never called himself Jesus, did he? The name thing seems like it can be used as deception. The name thing is also used as a demonic distraction, Laura. We are not sacred namers here at Chameleon Church or in any of our ministries. We are not sacred namers. I say Jesus. I say Yeshua. I say God. I say Adonai. I say Lord sometimes. Because most, there's, there's a reason why. Because my, my, I have a large audience of people in my life that they, they scam. I mean, they cover everything from absolute demonic non-believers pagans all the way to the most religious Torah insanity I can think of. And in the middle, somewhere in the middle there, are the sacred namers. I've been dealing with sacred name people for 30 years. I've been dealing with sacred name people longer than the majority of you have even knew, have even known the word Torah. I have zero tolerance for sacred name shenanigans. I'm not accusing you of sacred name shenanigans, but I what I what I'm saying is you cannot be so certain that he didn't call himself Yeshua either. See, because the people that are saying Yahshua or Yahushua or whatever other nonsense they came up with in the last six months would disagree with you that his name is Yeshua. See? So I've got people that are saying he would, I have people, I know people that are literally saying, I wonder if Yahashua actually introduced himself as Yeshua to people in dreams. He never called himself Yeshua, did he? The name thing, right? See, I have people that would say the same thing regarding your comment. So because of the insanity that is the sacred name, if if I look like I'm getting angry, it's because I am. Because I, like I said, I have zero tolerance for sacred name. I've been dealing with the sacred name cult and the sacred name cultists since 1991, and I have zero tolerance for it. So I, we don't play that game around here. We we don't. We don't. We just. We just aren't going to fuel that. That. That con. That mentality. Um, here's what I can tell you about sacred namers. Here's what I can tell you about people that make an issue of Jesus or Yeshua or Yeshua or Yahshua. Blah 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 blah. They don't speak in tongues. They don't heal the sick. They don't cast out demons. Um. I think people get hung up on the name of Jesus because they're not spiritually uh, minded. I mean, I think it's really, I think it's ignorant of us to think that I don't believe that what we call him is as important on as whether or not you keep his feast, whether or not you keep, you know, eat clean, whether or not uh, you can heal, speak in tongues, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. I'm not trying to embarrass you, Laura. I, I apologize if I'm embarrassing you. That's not my, my, that's not my reason for doing this. My reason for doing this is because it, it came up and, oh, okay, thank you. You're, you're, you're commenting. Let me see what your comment is. I get that. I just have been searching or, 
or organic, no game, just concerned with people like Kanye who play with the name and deceive people. But see, but you don't know Kanye West. See, that's the other thing. You don't know Kanye. You can't judge Kanye. It's not in your wheelhouse. It's not your responsibility for you or I to judge Kanye. That's between him and the father. It's not, has, it has nothing to do with us. I was there's a comment on the Michael Rood Saturday Shabbat Night Live of one of my shows saying this Allen guy is speaking way too much about charismatica and, and, and Pentecostalism and speaking in tongues. And it sounds like the Pentecostal charismatic churches I, I was involved with and I was deceived by the Kondalini spirit and blah, 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 blah. And we're afraid that what Allen is saying is going to lead people back to the church. And what they actually were saying was, we're afraid that what Alan's talking about is going to lead people back to Christianity because they hate Christians. These Torah insane, these Torah lunatics actually hate Christians and they hate Christianity. And they hate the idea of, of my involvement with Christians and Christianity. And we've talked about this on this on this show more than once. I mean, this is a reoccurring theme because these Torah nut jobs actually hate Christians because Christians don't keep Torah the way they do. I have Christian friends, which is why I said on Michael Rood's show that my pork eating Christian friends are better off than the Torah in nut jobs that call the Holy Spirit demonic because Jesus said there's no coming back from that. What the Bible does say about pork eating is that, oh, you'll be there, but you just won't be able to access him up in Mount Zion. But the people that call Kundal the Holy Spirit Kundalini, they're the ones, they're the bodies of the rebellious that we're going to be walking by and looking at. See, we, got, we have to stop this insanity about the name and about hating Christians. That's just insane. And I... I've been doing this a lot longer than all of you guys. The majority of you combined. Stop it. I'm not talking to you specifically. I'm just saying we can't judge people. We can't judge Kanye West. Do you realize the, the all the horrible things that you read about that people say about other people are said about me all the freaking day long? People think I'm nuts. They think I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cult leader. They, they think that I'm absolutely 100% demonic. There's people out there that believe I'm a warlock. I've been dealing with this since the day I got saved. Because a guy like me can't come to Jesus and, 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 and it be true. Because our God is weak and our God is a loser and our God is a dumbass. That, I, that a guy like me can't even come to Jesus. Because I'm more powerful than the God of the universe. And my sin's more powerful or my earrings are more powerful than the God of the universe. That's just... It's just constant. I love you, Alan. I love you too. And I love you, Laura. I, I, please don't think I'm coming at you. I do, I've do. i done this on this show before you started watching it. Okay? I do, this is what I do. Um, it's like it's like a, a, a kindergarten teacher, right? Always trying to keep her little cats, in, you know, hurting cats. H-E-R-D-I-N-G, cats. It's not about how you call him. I mean, if you say Yeshua, that's fine. We don't have a problem with that. But you can't have a problem with people saying Jesus because you don't know. You can't be 100% certain because the people that call him, what is that stupid new way, that Yahushua or whatever, they're adding O's and U's now, Y's and, 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 and W's and H's weren't enough. Now they're adding O's and U's and S's. Those people are convinced that Yeshua is wrong. The sacred namers, that I know personally for 30 years that are in a cult, call, it, call him Yahshua. So Yeshua is wrong. See what I'm saying? It's just insanity. It's insanity. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you, Laura. I See, I know that, Laura. See, here's what Laura's saying. Love you too. It's okay. Conversation. Thumbs up. See, I know that, but see, not everybody knows that. So I really greatly appreciate that you understand that because man, there's, there's people up, there's people, people are very sensitive. They get very offended by me and my earrings. Hear those? Yeah. I love them. Hey, imagine if I hadn't cut my dreads and I was doing this with my dreads. <laughs> that guy's a Rastafarian. He doesn't hey, care. You, you should, uh, do you, do you check this Barbara Alabama comment? 
Which one? I think, I think she needs some encouragement. Cannot find any fellowship. Oh. But I just felt led to pray or bless her and help her. Pray. Go for it. Hey, Barbara. I don't know you, but I can understand feeling alone. Um, so I just want to encourage you to keep going. Lord, I just pray that you would bless Barbara and her faith and her journey. And I pray that you put someone in her life today or this week that she can find fellowship. Someone she may not know yet. I just ask you to meet her need and be there for her and reveal yourself in a new way this week and encourage her heart. I bless you, Barbara. Um, there are, you probably know this, Barbara, there are uh, fellowship finders. Um, a 119 ministry has a fellowship finder. Um, I think, well, Glory of Zion, Chuck Pierce's organization used to have one. I don't know if it's, they took it down. I don't know if they put it back up. But um, yes, Father, we, we ask for you to bring to bring people into Barbara's life, responsible, God-fearing, scripturally sound, spiritually sound people into Barbara's life. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for all you new people that are here, man. We, we love you, man. We work, we work our butts off to, we're an equipping ministry. If you don't know, we're an equipping ministry, which is why we, we come up with this stuff. We're, we just, our heart's desire is to equip you into the deeper things of God, to equip you in, it's, not all Christianity is bad. Not all Torah observers are bad. See, don't get, don't, don't confuse that either. It's just that there's ninety nine point nine. I only know of a, one or two people that went from zero to Torah and bypassed Christianity and then had to go back to Christian. See, ninety nine point nine percent of you were Christians in a denomination. The majority were you were not spirit filled. You weren't charismatic. <clears throat> Pentecostals, you were just regular Christians. And then you came to Torah. Say, don't forget, don't forget, there was a time where you didn't know about eating clean. Don't forget, there wasn't a, there was a time where you didn't know his name was Yeshua or Joshua. You want to be technical, Joshua. Right? There's don't forget, there was a time where you know you didn't know about the feast or about keeping the Sabbath or the new moon. Don't forget, right? Well, don't forget that you're there, that you have brothers and sisters in the church. You have family members. Some of you are married, and your spouse isn't in agreement. Don't forget, see, because that's see God's heart. God, let me let me show let me tell you an example. And please come in. You, I'm, I'm talking too much. Um, let me give you an example of <clears throat> God's heart for those that don't keep the Torah for those that don't know about these things. Because see, when you start getting weird about the name and stuff like that, and you start getting weird about Christians, you're, 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 you're dabbling in, the, in a demonic Gnostic spirit, and that's not acceptable ever. So Jesus revealed himself to a Samaritan woman who was living with a man and had been married four times. That's my Jesus. Reading my thoughts. That's my Jesus. And I love that Jesus because I, I was so lost when he reached out to me and said, hey, I love you. Don't resist me. My Jesus reveals himself to questionable women, right? Women of ill repute. Did you know there's at least two, possibly three women of ill repute in the line of Messiah? Put that in your religious pipe and smoke it. Jesus did the unexpected, and he had no boundaries. or uh, He had boundaries, but he broke the boundaries others put on him. And he, right. can meet, he can meet anyone, anytime, anywhere. I just feel like Maria's comment, too, like something following up with that prayer is uh, maybe, maybe this is just saying it out loud to everyone to remind everyone especially in the last two years. The enemy wants people that are trying to work on their grafting and remaining in the vine. He wants them to feel alone and like it's pointless and divided. 
And it's hard to be in unity. It's hard to remain encouraged. I mean, when, when, when we need unity, when we need fellowship, are the times when the enemy is trying to press you in new ways. And so anyone on here, I just feel stay strong, stay in the word and remain in the vine. Yeah. He will meet your need. He will meet your loneliness. He will meet you when you feel divided or you feel like your words, world's cracking. He, he is there waiting to meet with you. Yeah. Jesus loves, Jesus loves the disenfranchised. I mean, the, see the woman that was caught in adultery, they were watching her have sex. That's how, let's, let's, that's the thing. <laughs> and they brought her to Jesus and he said, I don't judge you, man. Now go and sin no more. See, that's the key. Go and sin no more. Um, the woman, the, the, the Samaritan woman became a massive evangelist, man. After her whole town was stinking saved. She traveled and, and was a, that's what church history tells us. Um, you know, yeah. can I say something really oh, quick? Please, just, please do. It's an interesting thing because I'm just sitting here and he's just putting all these flashes on me. The words that are going out, the, the, um, everything everyone is saying this morning, he just gave me this picture. He goes, I'm looking at Christianity. I'm looking at the church and they are in the wilderness. And there's a voice that's crying out in the wilderness. Now, does this sound familiar? Prepare you the way of the Lord. And who was that? And you know, it's interesting because what is being said on this show, what has been being said from the EI to the, the um, Exodus to end gathering, what you're hearing even from other teachers is that we're preparing people for what needs to happen for what is to come. And that is to disciple people, get ready for spirit and truth. Yeah. And that's they come the, from everywhere. That's everywhere. And you know what? Think about what the testimony of Jesus is to keep his commandments and to hold to the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. You break those two down. That's spirit and truth. It's Torah and spirit. It's inseparable, and that is Jesus. Yeah. And um, everyone's getting a, a quick discipleship lesson in what we need to know in simplicity of what spirit and truth is. That's why they're rebelling against the charismatica. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Stop it! It's this is the word of God today to prepare us for what's to come. And you yeah. talk about like what Bickle said. Do you realize that the saints? When their prayers in Revelation chapter 8, when they finally get into the bowl, these are the saints that are alive on this planet. He, he's waiting for them. And they there is going to be a people that, and it's going to be a huge multitude that are praying that he says, okay, these are my people. They're saying, release it. And he flips the switch. And what does he do? I think it's the fourth seal. And a quarter of the population is totally eradicated. And these are the saints that are accomplishing his will. Oh, my gosh, that's my Jesus doing that? It's not gloom and doom. This is our redemption coming. And the believers don't even understand these things. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me put it into some perspective. So Jesus taught the Torah like the Pharisees did, but he did it differently. His approach was completely different, right? The Pharisees had a problem with the fact that he was hanging out with sinners. Yes. And that he came eating and drinking because Messiah, for some reason, I guess, wouldn't come eating and drinking. Uh, you know, that's just weird, right? So, But but it's not like Jesus was teaching a, a different Torah. It's the same Torah, but he wasn't legalistic about it. He was, um, he made it available, right? One of the things he tells John's disciples who were wondering whether he was Messiah or not was the poor are getting the gospel. That was an issue, apparently. Apparently the poor were not getting the gospel. It was an elitist thing the Pharisees had been doing. And the only time he came against the Pharisees was because of their hypocrisy. And then he tells them, the, Pharise the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. You have to obey them. They represent Moses. They are the authority. 
but don't be like them. Don't do what they do. Don't be hypocrites. Actually do the word. Don't just be hearers, but be doers of the words. And don't be a a hypocrite while you're at it. Well, imagine if, for example, imagine if I found out that you didn't speak in tongues or that you thought tongues was speaking in a human language, not a spiritual language, because a lot of people believe that. Imagine if you didn't speak in tongues or had a different opinion or a different interpretation or a different perspective on tongues and you didn't heal the sick and you didn't prophesy and you didn't do any of that stuff. Imagine if I decided that you weren't legit. Imagine if I imagine if I took the stance, see, that uh, imagine imagine if I took the stance that if you didn't function in charismatica, off with your heads, <laughs> you know, uh, we, we, we can't have anything to do with you. That wouldn't be fair because that would eliminate more than 75% of you. But that's not how Jesus works, see? Because Jesus knows a Samaritan woman is living with a man who's not her husband and she's been married four times. That wasn't an issue. Why? Because he saw where she would go, where she was going to be. See, we're all on this timeline. And God sees it from the very beginning and to the very end because he sees from a higher vantage point. That's why he's not worried about the fact that my bacon-eating friend is eating bacon this morning with his breakfast because how do you know that in six months he's going to be keeping the the feast and and start eating clean? But if you judge him and condemn him today, he's not going to get to month six. See? How do you know that the guy that's not speaking in tongues today, you can't condemn him for that because how do you know he's not going to be prophesying mightier than you in 12 months? You see, you can't, live, you can't do this. God doesn't do that. You can't do that. Because if, if, if he did to you what you do to them, none of us would be here right now. See, that's my Jesus. Yeah, Jesus always, he, he busted the, the, the rules. He always brought it back to the heart. Yep. Not, not losing the forest through the trees or whatever yep. that saying is. And beautiful, the beautiful way he taught and lived. I, I think there's something about praying for those. I mean, this, this, is, this is something I'm thinking about that I've been thinking about this year personally. I do a, I do a walk. Um, a loop or uh, there's these paths around my house and I'll find myself praying and thinking, but how I'm practicing prayer is when, when I have the, they, or the, they is not a believer or is a believer or, or if I'm encountering a speech or a an attitude that is contrary to what I believe or I've historically believed rather than getting angry and, and pr- praying against them, praying for God's heart for them. God, what is your heart for this person? What is your heart for this situation? And rather than praying for, for God to change them, praying for, for them engaging in God's Jesus's prayer and Jesus's intercession for that person that they would know Jesus's heart for them and that the obstacles for them understanding and knowing Jesus's heart for them would be removed rather than making them the enemy. It's a spiritual warfare. God, the things that are keeping them in bondage or the walls that are around their heart that are keeping them from engaging the Lord's heart, break those, remove those. And and it changes me. It changes my perspective and gives me a love and a care for, for others rather than like, uh, you know, uh, demonizing them. Right. God, get, let them know your heart and help me not be in the way of your heart for them. How do I participate in the Father's heart for them? It works great when you're praying for your kids and your wife. Show me what is your heart for, for my wife? What is, my wife's name is Steph. What is your heart for Steph? Rather than saying, Lord, change Steph. Help her to see it like I see it. No, Lord, what is your heart for her? And how am I getting the way of what your heart is for her or us together? And it it's it's uh it changes me when I start praying like that. The Lord's heart. Pray the Lord's heart for people. Yeah. You know, 
understand and remember that the majority of people in your life, in your circle of life, whether it's your family, immediate family, extended family, uh, the people at your, at your workplace, uh, the people you run into in the supermarket, the cashier, that, you know, the people that you, in the, that they don't know who Messiah is, the majority of these people, I'm thinking. And that you need to represent Messiah to these people, regardless of where they're at. Because we're supposed to be preparing a people for his return. And, and like, like Chris just said, you know, if you're praying for God's heart for these people, it'll, we're supposed to be Messiah in their life. And Messiah is not going to be breaking their heads <laughs> because they're, you know, think of how he, think of his example. Mercy. Thanks for being here. Thanks for tolerating us. Thanks for putting up with us. My name is Alan Aguirre. This is the Chameleon Church Show. Hey, if you're on YouTube, hit uh, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell, leave a comment. Uh, and if you're on Facebook, be sure to like and uh, do all the social media stuff because that, that helps with the, the algorithms and uh, all that kind of thing. And um, yeah. So the next two weeks, I won't be here. These two guys will be running the show. Have a good time. I might pop in and watch without you guys knowing. You never know, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to make a new promo for this book. But in the meantime, hey, I'll see you the first week of November. Pray for us on our trip. And um, we'll talk to you guys later. Listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. The views and opinions expressed during our broadcasts are solely those of the broadcast producers, hosts, and or guests, etc., and are not necessarily the views or opinions of the Travelog Network, its sponsors, or affiliates.